it's very on brand of me to be this late in the year when it comes to talking about something from the previous year. But yes, here I am again. I'm gonna be going over every single book I read in the year 2020, giving you guys a brief review. And I got into reading, or back into reading I should say, in the year 2020, and I really started avidly reading probably about halfway through. I mean, I don't think I joined Goodreads until like halfway through the year. Now because of that, I think I read around 40 books. I'm not quite sure. I think I missed a couple because, like I said, I wasn't recording my books on Goodreads until about July, August. But I still wanted to share with you guys my stats because I think they're fun to look at. At least I like looking at them. So my year in books in 2020, I read 12,988 pages, which is by far the most I've read in one year. My shortest book that I read was Animal Farm by George Orwell, and my longest book was 112263 by Stephen King. On average, the book lengths that I read was 360 pages, and the most popular book I read was George Orwell's Animal Farm, and the least popular book I read was Dirty John, which no surprise there. My average rating for 2020 was three and a half stars. I think that's pretty accurate. By the way, I'm sure there are a lot of us out there who think this as well. I really wish Goodreads had an option to give books like half stars because there are a lot of books that I felt like needed a half star. Anyways, okay, let's just go ahead and get into it. So the first book is What I Know For Sure from Oprah Winfrey. This was a recommendation from a friend of mine. I feel like this was a good book. Actually, looking back, I don't even have this on my Goodreads, but I know I read it in 2020, and I probably rate it like a three out of five stars. It was a pretty fluffy read and pretty quick to go through. It's just basically a compilation of all of her What I Know For Sure series in her Oprah magazine. It's just kind of life advice, and she has them categorized by different themes, like clarity is one. Another theme is awe. <laughs> So it's just kind of a nice light reminder, a good amount of affirmations in there. The next book I finished was The Glass Castle. This was a gift and recommendation from my sister and I enjoyed this. I gave it a four out of five stars on my Goodreads. I thought it was a really interesting look at someone else's life experiences and it's kind of one of those books you read through and are shocked that someone can experience those types of life events and still turn out to be able to write a beautiful book like this so I really enjoyed this one. The next book I read was Where the Crawdad Sings. My physical copy is actually being borrowed by my sister and I absolutely love that book. I included it in my top five reads from 2020 because I enjoyed it so much. Such a beautiful book to read. I love the story and it combined a lot of elements that I like to see in books like there was a little bit of like a thriller aspect murder mysteries slash a totally self-reliant woman. I liked it. The next book I read was a digital book which was called Priceless, How I Went Undercover to Rescue the World's Stolen Treasures. I actually rated this a four out of five stars on my Goodreads. I think I would have given it like a three and a half out of five stars. It's actually a nonfiction book and it's an FBI agent who retells his accounts on how he recovered some of the world's most priceless artifacts. Really interesting to learn how much art actually goes for. Next, I read The Silent Patient, which I also read on my Kindle. I gave it a four out of five stars. Absolutely loved it. I loved the twist. Never saw it coming, and I love thrillers like that. I thought it was a very unique take and a very good psychological thriller. Next, I read Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. I gave it a three out of five stars, which is pretty much a common theme with Mary Roach books for me. I thought it was really interesting to look at the different ways cadavers are used in science, and I'm kind of morbid like that, so I like to learn weird facts. But Mary Roach is one of those authors for me. I don't like sit down and marathon read her. I will read like a chapter at a time. So this was a really good way to introduce me to the world of cadavers and how they're used in everyday life and how they affect your everyday life. You probably would never know it. Next, I read The Lincoln Conspiracy, The Secret Plot to Kill America's 16th President. This is by one of my favorite authors, Brad Meltzer. And I gave it a five out of five stars. I'd probably go back and give it like a four out of five stars, but it was pretty dense as far as trying to follow all the different storylines because there's a lot of different underground organizations that were trying to assassinate Lincoln. It was a little hard for me to follow at times, but still really interesting to hear how things went on during Lincoln's time, especially in the political realm. And 
Oddly enough, I felt like it had a lot of parallels as to what's going on in the current political realm. So it did have some relevancy in that aspect, a little too much relevancy, if you know what I mean. But still, I think it's good to learn about these types of things. And I definitely learned some stuff about Lincoln I didn't know before. I'm a big history buff, so I like books like this. Next, we have another Mary Roach book, Packing for Mars, The Curious Science of Life in the Void. This one specifically was about life in space. I gave it a three out of five stars and I liked it because it covered a lot of things you never think about when it goes to traveling in space like the commode situation or motion sickness, just a bunch of random things that it was pretty interesting to learn about and I feel like now I can retell different things about traveling in space that a lot of my friends might not know about. So. I feel a little bit more well-versed. Another one of my favorites was the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I gave it a five out of five stars. This was also one of my favorite books of 2020, and I really like this because it was such a fun, interesting read. I love the character dynamics in this book. He did a really good job of making the characters have personalities of their own, and you could really see them evolve through the story and their interactions with each other. Again, it was just a really fun book, and I read this during the month of October, so timing wise, it was absolutely perfect, and I highly, highly recommend it. It was super fun. The next book was Peace is Every Step The Path of Mindfulness in Everyday Life. This was by Thich Nhat Han, and I gave it a three out of five stars. I think it's good for those people who are new to meditation or new to mindfulness in life. For me, it was just a good reminder of stuff that I try to practice every day, and it was a peaceful read. Again, something that is a good reminder to have and take a step back and enjoy. The next book I read was Nosferatu by Joe Hill. At the time when I read this, I had no idea Joe Hill is Stephen King's son. The reason I picked this book out was because it was during the month of October, so I was looking for like a spooky read and this one specifically I knew that there was a show about and my most favorite thing to do is to read a book and then watch the show or movie based off of it. I still haven't gotten around to watching the show, <laughs> but only because the book to me was okay. I gave it a three out of five stars. It was a really interesting book, but it did kind of slow down at times. The pacing wasn't the best, and yeah, it was definitely very creepy and trippy at times, and I almost wish I'd read it during the Christmas time because I felt like it would have been a better book for Christmas. If you read it, you'll know what I mean. The next book I read is called When You See Me. This is from Lisa Gardner. I gave it a two out of five stars. I have no idea really what possessed me to read this book. It's part of a series she has encompassing the characters that you'll see in this book, but I just, I think I was in the mood for like a suspense thriller type of book. It was okay, I literally sat down and read this in one day because I just wanted to know what happened, but I wasn't super invested with these stories or characters. So much so that I probably wouldn't seek out any other books featuring these characters. So if that tells you anything about how I felt about this book. The next book I read was 112263. This is my first Stephen King book and I, <laughs> I didn't really mean to pick such a long book. I read this actually on my Kindle and then I picked up the physical copy because I liked it that much. This is one of my all time favorite books. It is intimidating to look at, but the story is so worth it. I really fell in love with the characters in this book. This had everything in it for me and I bawled my eyes out at the end of this. We did end up watching the Hulu series, which I might be in the minority, but I kind of hated the Hulu series because I love this book so much and I feel like it's not that they didn't do a good job, but it was just a completely different plot. If you guys have ever read this and watched the show, you'll know what I'm talking about. I felt like they missed a lot of the parts in this book that I liked. I won't go into this too much because I did include this in my top five books. So good. This will be a book that I think in the future I will reread. Because I liked this book so much, I decided to read another Stephen King book, which was The Shining. I read it on my Kindle, but I do have a physical copy coming in the mail because I loved it that much. I rated it a four out of five stars. I think I'd probably give it like a four and a half out of five stars. And it follows Danny, Jack, and Wendy Torrance. I've never actually watched the movie. I'm not a big movie or TV person, so <laughs> anytime there's like an adaptation, the story is usually new to me because I have no idea what happened in the movie or, or TV series. So. 
I had no idea how the book was going to play out. It was a total page turner. I love the combination of kind of the paranormal but still a realism aspect to it with the whole alcoholism bit that Jack Torrance was experiencing. You definitely question a lot of times what's real or what's fake. So I absolutely loved the book. One of my favorites. And I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of turning into like a major Stephen King fangirl. I got some more of his books on the way. The next book I read was Animal Farm. I read a digital copy of it. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. And I picked this book out because I felt like, again, there were a lot of similarities to what's going on right now in the world to the book itself. Believe it or not, I was never required to read it as a child growing up. At least if I did, I don't remember it or I cliff noted it so it didn't resonate with me. And it was definitely one of those books I think everyone needs to read in their life. I could see why it's required reading growing up. And now that I'm a little bit older, I understand more what this story is about or the message it's trying to relay versus just being a book about talking animals because that's probably what I would have taken away from it <laughs> when I was in school. The next book I read was a digital copy of A Man Called Ove. I gave it a four out of five stars. I was bawling at the end of the book. It was a really pleasant read. It was like soft to read, if that explains it at all. I felt like it was a little slow at times, which is why I think I dinged it a star. I felt like the pacing, it was, you know, could, could have been sped up a little bit. But it really is just a beautiful book about a man called Ove and his purpose in life, trying to regain purpose in life through people who just kind of fell into his lap through being in the same neighborhood. So if you're ever kind of like down and out, I feel like this would be a really good book as a pick me up. The next book I read was The Song of Achilles. I gave it a five out of five stars. Again, one of my favorite books of all time. This is just such a beautifully written book. I love this book so much. I just immediately became a Madeline Miller fan. I did read Circe's this year and I enjoyed that. So I'm excited for more of her upcoming books. I actually didn't really know what this was about. I just like books in this general area of time. My heart broke reading this book. And this is one of those few books, I think the ending of this, it couldn't have ended any better. Now, because I like The Song of Achilles so much, I was looking on bookworms trying to find similar books or authors that kind of wrote in a similar way. So I read The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. I gave it a three out of five stars. It was a little bit more visceral than The Song of Achilles was. It's kind of like The Song of Achilles in the sense it follows another character that you'll see mentioned a lot in this book, Briseis. And so it's written from a different perspective more of like a female's role during this time. So again, it was a very eye-opening read. It was kind of brutal at times, but I think it also did a pretty good job of explaining a lot of the emotions tied into being a, a woman during that time. So it's a little bit more heavy. It does have some graphic content in it, but I liked it. It just wasn't as good as The Song of Achilles. I mean, I think any book I read after that was setting it up for failure a little bit. The next book I read was Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. I also listened to this on audiobook and I like listening to a lot of Malcolm Gladwell's books on audiobooks because he narrates them himself so I feel like he does a really good job of emphasizing points that he wants to emphasize through his voice. I did rate this a 3 out of 5 stars. I felt like compared to other Malcolm Gladwell books this wasn't my favorite. In fact, I, I find this a, a little inconsistent at times. I definitely found it interesting. It was definitely a page turner because I have just found a lot of the information in this fascinating as well as slightly depressing. <laughs> but sometimes I felt like he was trying to make different points in this book that didn't necessarily connect. So yeah, not my favorite Malcolm Gladwell book. Worth the read, sure, but I think I liked his other books better. The next book I read was Me Before You. I gave this a five out of five stars and you guys haven't made the connection. When I give a book five out of five stars, I really liked it, like top books of my lifetime. Heart-wrenching, I did go into this more on my top five books of 2020. So again, I won't get too much into this. I did read the second book like a, a week or two ago. Not as good, she should have just stuck with this one. I think I'm just gonna read the third out of my legency to this book because I liked it so much, but boy was that a letdown. I was actually very upset over that book. So if you've never read this book, just read this one. Don't go on to the second or third book, definitely, probably not worth it, kind of. I won't say ruins this book, but it's like, where are we going? I hate it, I'm upset, but still, 
This one's so good. Five out of five. I went off on a tangent there. Next book I read was Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I gave it a three out of five stars. This was my first introduction to Neil Gaiman. I really like his writing and storytelling. And the reason that I read this book was because it was right before Assassin's Creed Valhalla launched. So I wanted to brush up on my Norse mythology to see if there were a lot of parallels in the game versus real Norse mythology and I was pretty impressed by a lot of the similarities between the two. It was just a way for me to get hyped but also an enjoyable book that again I think was a really fun little story. The next book I read was The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars and I mentioned this in my books that I thought were overrated. I forget exactly what I titled it, but essentially this book was one of those books. It's not that I didn't enjoy reading it because I still gave it a three out of five stars. I just felt like for the hype, I was expecting more from this. And I did feel like the storyline in this was a little played. I'm one of those people I kind of saw the ending coming. I know this can be a bit polarizing. Some people were totally blindsided. Some people kind of saw it coming. I felt like I kind of saw it coming. The Great Alone. This is from Kristen Hanna. And I'm not going to lie, I was a little intimidated to read this book because it's a bit of a thicker book. It's got about 550 pages in this. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I really like this and I read this because a lot of people said this was comparable to where the crawdad sings, at least the main character in this. I could definitely see that. I enjoyed reading about Lenny in Alaska, her coming of age during the time that she was growing up. But I will say I do feel at the end the author kind of threw everything but the kitchen sink at Lenny and it was like sometimes I was reading I'm like oh okay now this has happened to her. Oh and now this and now that and how are we going to resolve this in the last hundred pages. Still enjoyed four out of five stars. I'm going to read The Nightingale because I actually hear that The Nightingale is better than this book. So if it is I'm in for a treat. The next book I read was The Whisper Man. I showed this in my book outlet haul and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I really like this book. I actually liked it more than The Woman in the Window if you're into suspense thrillers. This is about a dad who is going through a divorce and he's trying to find his son. I won't <laughs> spoil it too much. The hard thing about doing some of these like book reviews or quick book reviews is I don't want to ruin these for you so I feel like I'm being a bit vague but I did like this book and it was worth the read. The next book I read was Educated by Tara Westover. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I also included this book in my video where I talked about books I didn't enjoy as much as other people that I felt it was slightly overhyped and my reasoning for that was not again because I didn't enjoy the book. I still enjoyed the book. But my issue with it was, was there were so many circumstances that happened that I felt were a little, I don't want to say hard to believe because I don't want to discount someone else's life experiences. It was just way out there. Like it got wild at some points and I, I was just sitting there like, is this really happening? Because this is supposed to be a memoir of Tara Westover's life. So it was okay. The next book I read was Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking by Malcolm Gladwell. I gave it a three out of five stars. I enjoyed this one more than the Talking to Strangers. Again, I listened to this on audiobook, so I enjoyed it, but it wasn't even that memorable. Like I'm sitting here thinking, what is it about? And I don't really remember. <laughs> So. The next book I read was The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. This I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars and this is not only my first introduction to Agatha Christie but also Hercule Poirot. I think that's how you pronounce him. She has a bunch of books obviously featuring Her Hercule Poirot but I'll have to read more of those books because I really like this one. I'd probably give it like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I did not see the ending coming. If you're looking for a really good twist at the end, you're just like, wow, wow. I'd recommend this. And I, again, since this was my first book to Agatha Christie, was kind of using this as a way to see if I wanted to read more of her books. I like this so much, I plan on reading more of her books. Following that, I read How to Build a Dinosaur. This is by Jack Horner and James Gorman. I gave this a three out of five stars. For being a science-based book, I thought Jack Horner did a really good job breaking it down for someone like me who has no background in science and explaining it really well. I did feel like he went off in the weeds a little bit away from the idea of reverse evolution. I did find myself kind of breezing through those parts because I was like, mm, I don't know if I need to know this. This was a really cool idea. My eyes were definitely open to the concept of reverse evolution and the future of it in science. I had no idea that even the disciplines of science featured in this book existed so this was actually really fun to read as well. Next I read Dirty John 
and The True Stories of Outlaws and Outsiders by Christopher Gofford. This, I believe, was the only book that I gave a one star. The reason I gave this book a one star is because this book wasn't even about Dirty John for like 80% of it. I didn't realize this featured a lot of other people and basically they're like anecdotal experiences with different, I don't even know the relevance of them to Dirty John. Like it made absolutely no sense, felt really random. I picked this book up because again, I never watched the show or listened to the podcast Dirty John. So this was gonna be a new experience for me. Yeah, this author ruined it for me. <laughs> I was like, what is this? The next book I read was All the Light We Cannot See. This was, believe it or not, my first time reading this book. I gave it a three out of five stars. Only reason I gave it three out of five stars was because I wasn't as in love with this book as I think most people are. I felt like it was a bit slow at times and while I understood again the purpose of all of the detail in this book featuring the two main characters, I, I just felt like it wasn't as entertaining for me. Like it wasn't as much of a page turner for me because it was going in between two different people. I can see why people like this and enjoyed it so much, but this also took me the longest to get through. It, this book actually took me probably like six months to get through because I would set it down and I really had no desire to pick it up again. I almost DNF'd this book, but I just was like, okay, I need to read this book because I've had so many people tell me just finish it and then decide what you think about it. So it was okay. Like I said, I'm not upset that I read it, but I just wasn't as much of my favorite as I think it was for other people. Next, I read A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. I had no idea what this book was about when I started reading it, and boy, did it get dark at some times, but it was really good. I gave it a four out of five stars. It's considered a psychological fiction, but there were also some, like, I, I guess you'd call them paranormal aspects to it or like spiritual aspects to it if that makes sense. So essentially you're following this 16 year old story through her diary entries which washed up ashore to another woman who's reading it. <laughs> it's really really good. The reason I took one star off was because again it was just really hard to read at times. I would definitely say be emotionally prepared to read something like this because it does have to do a little bit with sexual abuse as well as just a lot of bullying beyond the average teenage bullying it's like excessive teenage bullying and you really feel sorry for the main character so be ready for that i'm glad i read it and i'm almost glad i didn't know what it was about because i don't know if i would have ever been ready for it so it's kind of good i was surprised by it the next book i read was the richest man in babylon i give it a three out of five stars the reason that I read this book was because I feel like it's one of those books I see people recommend all the time as one of the books you should read at least once in your lifetime and it's a fairly short read so I just wanted to knock it out and it has a lot of like I guess financial advice in it. A lot of it I felt like I already knew because I'm pretty fiscally responsible but again it was a good reminder and a really interesting way to read about financial advice I guess you could say. For me it wasn't like groundbreaking but Maybe for someone who is totally new to financial responsibility, it would be a very good read. The next book I read was another Stephen King book called The Colorado Kid. This is actually part of the Hard Case Crime series. I gave this a two out of five stars. Even Stephen King self admits that this is either gonna be a book you love or it's gonna be a book you don't love. I'm on the don't love side of things. I just felt like there should have been more of a resolution at the end and there really wasn't. So it was a little bit of a letdown in that sense, but it's a quick read for Stephen King. So if you're like me who eventually wants to read like the full catalog of Stephen King books, this is something you could just knock out in like an afternoon. The next book I read on my Kindle was Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb and I gave it a three out of five stars. I had a friend actually recommend this and she's actually a psychologist so of course she'd recommend this book and I thought it was actually really good. Some of the stories through this book were really hard to read because again you kind of smack in the head with reality and it's good because you realize in a sense how blessed you are in life or like see what other people go through to read between the lines and not take everyone for face value. So I think there's a lot of good reminders in this book. I see a therapist so a lot of the things that I was reading in this I did see a lot of parallels to with my therapy so yeah it was good. Next I read The Girls of Murder City by Douglas Perry. This is essentially telling the story behind the famous Broadway musical Chicago and features 
a lot of murderesses, I guess you could call them, from the Chicago area during like the 1920s era. I, I definitely bogged down in this. Like it was hard to read because I was like, felt a little bit longer than it needed to be. The characters were interesting, but it felt like a lot of the same stories with a lot of these women. It was like, okay, she was treated better because she was attractive and dressed nicely. And this other woman was not treated very well because she was considered unattractive and did not dress nicely. And people got better treatment than others. Another book I almost DNF, but I was like so far through it, I was like, okay, I'll just finish it and just like sat down and finished it one afternoon. The next book I read was Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I again talked about this book in books that I didn't enjoy as much as other people or I thought they were overrated. I really kind of hate using the term overrated because I don't want to discount other people's affection for a book. I think it's obviously very subjective and opinionated type of thing. I gave this a three out of five stars and the reason that I didn't rate this higher or as high as I was expecting to rate it was because this really wasn't what I was expecting and I felt like the story was a little convoluted at times, a little hard to understand and the characters seemed to kind of come out of nowhere sometimes where there wasn't much of a backstory and I really love character driven books. This I'd heard was comparable to Madeline Miller's writing as well as Neil Gaiman and I did not see that at all. So again, it's one of those books. It's not that I didn't enjoy reading it, it's just I didn't enjoy it as much as other people and I felt like had it been changed in a couple different ways, I would have liked it more. <laughs> the last book I read for the year 2020, I finished on the 31st, right before the new year, and it is Man's Search for Meeting by Victor E. Frankel. I gave this a four out of five stars. This again is one of those books you see everyone recommending if you're going through a hard place in your life or you're feeling kind of down and out. This is one of those books that is good for a reminder. I will say I started reading this book like a year or two ago and then I sat it down and then came back to it towards the end of last year and reread it. And I felt like it was, again, it, it has, hard content to read because it does have to do with the Holocaust and it's through Victor E. Frankel's eyes. But because the author is a psychologist, it does approach it in a more psychological way, if that makes sense. Kind of the, the process of the mind or the reason people think a certain way or possible motivations for life. So again, man's search for meaning, kind of the meaning of life in a way. So it was good. I liked it. I, th I think this is definitely one of those books. I see why people think this is a book you should read in your lifetime and I'm glad I did. Alright guys, so those were all the books that I read in 2020. I'm really optimistic for the year 2021 as far as reading goes. I think I've already finished like 10 books up to this point and we're not even finished with January. So I'm really looking forward to this year as far as reading goes. I am putting together very comprehensive TBRs and I wanna have like themed months where I read certain genres or certain types of books during a month. I'm mildly obsessed with booktube and I'm really happy to be a part of it. Just throwing that out there. I've got a lot of books coming. I've actually already purchased a second bookshelf for all the books I plan on reading. As always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.